Hello, brethren. Praise the Lord and God is good. That has given us another chance to interact with his word. And uh, just like it has always been, we shall always begin with a word of prayer because commitment to God is will is the most important. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you are giving us to share from your word. And how we think about how you attain our attention, how you get our attention. Sometimes we get so busy, sometimes we get so involved, but you draw us to you and therefore we pray that you take us through this session and so that we can hear you speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you are most welcome again. And I come to share with you how the Lord God can get our attention. There are moments in our lives when we get so busy, so engaged, and that our time is overtaken and we find ourselves muddled up somewhere else. And yet our life has to be a life of worship. I mean everything that we do. I mean every program that we engage ourselves in. I mean even the work that we do with our hands. Everything has to give glory to God because we are created or we were created to worship God. And so uh, sometimes we um, get involved and we put God aside. And because we do that, there are moments when God wants to draw our attention, to draw our attention to him. And so it is something that I'm coming to share with you uh, this time around that ways that God thinks that God can do to draw our attention to him when he realizes, when he sees that we have actually put him aside in our programs, call it work, even family, name it everything. If he's outside everything, then he will do his divine intervention to draw you back to him. I want to mention a few things very quickly. One, for God to draw your attention, sometimes he can come to disrupt your programs, just disrupting, and he does it in his divine way. And God can actually slow down those programs, be it work, be it what, and so that he enables you, he, he makes you stop and think, um, stop what you are doing. And when we get convinced, that actually, uh, when he gets convinced that what you are doing is not according to his plan. And there is a biblical portion that supports that. And that you remember the story of the building of the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11. The Bible does mention that actually people planned and they wanted to build that building and go high up and reach heaven. And so that they cut short the plan of God that had mentioned that we um, scatter, you know, produce, multiply, fill the earth and control it. And so for them, they wanted to cut short that plan in Genesis chapter 11. But God decided to come down, come down and do what? Come down not to bless, come down not to do anything else, but he came down to disrupt the programs that these people were doing because the program itself was actually to benefit the people when they had put God outside uh, outside their plans. So God, this is a confirmation that God can decide to come down and become and makes it to become like a bubble, collapse, so that actually his will can be done. And so this Genesis chapter 11 shows us that the, our plans, God has to be involved. God has to be in them. And the moment he's out of them, it can, it can be interrupted. Could be even a marriage when you do it and God is not in it. Could be even work that you are doing. Maybe you are going to get involved in a business and it's it's not a, it's a deal that God is not pleased with. Sometimes you, you, you may make losses and you think that actually maybe something wrong has happened. It's only that actually you have to have spiritual eyes to see whether it is God's thing or your thing and therefore God can come down to disrupt your program. And so... I have learned something that actually when I'm doing something, I need to involve God so that um, he blesses it. 
And so we needed to realize that actually God comes down not only to bless people because actually I've always said God comes down to bless and do what, but sometimes when the program is not his own, he will disrupt it. Now, point number two that I'm making is sometimes if the plan is not God's plan, he comes down and makes us restless. He makes us restless, actually restless. You try to sleep, sleep is not coming. You try to have peace, peace is not there. And the evidence of this is pertaining what the Israelites went through during uh, the time of Esther. There is a king um, and uh, the scenario, you know it, uh, when uh, the man Haman was attempting to cause the destruction of the Israelites, uh, including the man who Esther's uncle called Mordecai. And so uh, God, what God, God decided to do was actually to create scenarios, create situations that enabled the salvation of the Israelites. And what I'm talking about here is sometimes God makes us restless. And the point I'm making is in Esther chapter 6, verse 1, the Bible says that on that night, the king could not sleep and gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds, the chronicles, and they were read before him. And it was found written how Mordecai had told about Bidikana and Teresh. You know, the story is, the Bible is telling us that God can make us restless so that actually his plans are fulfilled. You, When you read the story of these people, how they were going to be uh, destroyed, how they were going to be, you know, um, all of them to be dealt with. Now, Mordecai had done something first because there was a plan to harm the king and Mordecai had said it. And they now had, had brought the information to the king and the king's life was saved. Now, this time around, it was the turn for Mordecai to be, you know, to be dealt with and his people to be killed, to be destroyed. But the king had to remember what Mordecai had done to save his life in the, I mean, earlier. And so what, what happens here is there's disruption and making the king restless until the books were brought, read, and Mordecai and the, Jew, and the Jews, you read the story that it led to the salvation of these people. So sometimes God makes us restless and um, eventually Mordecai was honored and um, Mordecai had done a lot, like I've already said. And so um, at this time, the proper moment for Mordecai had come. And because the moment had come for Mordecai to be elevated, there was restlessness in the life of the king. And so God providentially inter intervened so that the king suffered insomnia. Insomnia is a lack of uh, sleep or sleeplessness. And so sometimes, this, and when God decided, so my brothers and sisters, uh, when the time has come, Maybe someone is, is, wants to deal with you in a wrong way and you are God-fearing. Remember, God will fight for you and he will make somebody restless until uh, his plans, until God's plans are fulfilled. So I just want to encourage you that if there is anything, when the time is due, God will do it. When the time is there, when it is actually, when the due time has come, when the full time has come, God intervenes and his divine intervention is the best. So sometimes God providentially does that and may he do it providentially in my life and may he do it providentially in your life. And I will not enumerate so many things, but let me give two or three more that God catches our attention through the voices of those we don't expect to hear from. When God wants to catch your attention, you will hear certain voices from people, sometimes people speaking and you're not expecting anything from those people. Or even friends, even animals can speak. Remember the story of Balaam, the man who was going to curse the Israelites. But because God wanted something, so he drew the attention of Balaam by making the donkey to speak. And so sometimes he uses the voices that from people that we don't expect or from situations that we don't expect. Now, remember, the little boy, Samuel, uh, when... Uh, um, uh, when he had, I mean, when, it, it, there was confusion in the house also. And so the voices, God uses the unexpected voices. But also remember uh, in, um, about the, uh, the man, Naaman, in Second uh, Kings chapter 5. Remember the man who, who had suffered the leprosy. And um, he had a message from a slave girl. Can you imagine a slave girl mentioning that you go to Israel and uh, salvation is found there and your skin will be clean? Oh! 
Naaman said, no. How can I listen to the voice of a little thing like this? And moreover, a what? A house girl. Remember, but when Naaman heard that voice and went, his skin returned and we praise the Lord for that message. So God catches our attention through sometimes voices that come and we don't expect anything good from it. If I had the time, I will tell you lots of examples of such voices. Even mad people, a mad man can mention something and you wonder, and then maybe when actually it's going to save you. Sometimes a mad man can tell you that, hey, you go, but there's something, maybe a hole, maybe the river has over flooded. And you know, and you say, oh, that one, yes, a mad man is speaking. So there are certain times when God speaks and uses voices from situations or from people that you don't expect. And um, um, I just want to wind up with this. Sometimes um, God catches our attention by disappointments. Can you imagine? Disappointment is this way. You see, remember in the Bible, we have a long list of barren women. You know, barren is a very, is a very big disappointment when you get married. You have a wife, you are, your husband and the children have not come. But sometimes those come so that God catches our attention. Sarah, you remember. Rebecca, the wife of uh, Isaac, remember. She also became burning a little bit. Rachel, the second wife of Jacob. She actually bred burning for a, for a while. Hannah, the woman in the first Samuel chapter 1. Then Elizabeth, okay, mention all those that you could know. Sometimes God uses the disappointments to catch our attention. Now, what am I saying? That these extreme circumstances, sometimes, that God uses, they can cut, catch our attention. Now, what I'm coming here to say and to share with you, brethren, is that there are situations that come in our life. And then we think that maybe they are bad or maybe they are, you know, they are, they, they are disappointing us. But when God is just trying to catch our attention. But one thing is, as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes type, chapter 3, verse 1, that there is time for everything. So you only need, my brother, my sister, to position yourself, to listen, that in every situation, God may be speaking something to you. And when the time is due, he answers prayer. This, uh, this day I was actually also reading that, that God's promises in all, they are yes and amen. And so I just want to, to wind up with that verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 20. And the Bible, I just want to read it verbatim the way it is because I don't want to use my own words here. And the Bible says the following, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 20. And the Bible says that for all the promises of God find their yes in him. It is yes and amen. So in all situations... Position yourself. I need to position myself. You need to position yourself. Is it a good time? Is it a hard time? Is it these situations that I mentioned? And by the way, there are so many situations. You need to position your God yourself and hear God speak to you. And maybe this is the time around that actually God is, is speaking to you something special. Maybe during the disappointments. Maybe through the voices. There are some people who speak to us things that we don't expect, but they come true. And so I have to pay attention and listen. And sometimes God can make restlessness in some cases, in some way. And also we say that God can also disrupt our programs. So my brothers and sisters, may God bless you as you take this in and as you think yourself through and as also plan to, to think through and continue serving God in all situations. For there's nothing that is impossible with God. All things are possible with him and so i just want to pray that god blesses you and the work of your hands that god continues speaking to you in his own way he speaks to me in his own way and so that you can see hear him speak and that's what you call divine intervention and divine attention god bless you in the name of jesus christ our lord amen